Hey, welcome you guys to another video on Camera Vince's Photo Mechanic, the ultimate professional workflow tool. In this video, we're going to cover the IPTC stationary pad and working in the IPTC window, because this is where the uh, photo mechanic really does play a big role in how your images are tagged and edited. And, and they, this stationary pad actually plays a pretty important role. So if we take a look at some of these images, if you look at them, you click the I button and you'll get some generic information. I like to make sure that I have my um, address and, and copyright and things like that. We'll discuss this a little bit further here. But let's look at the global stationary pad first. And you can get to that by coming up to image and hitting IPTC stationary pad. Now here you'll see the, the, the global stationary pad and, and everything is checked off. Now I've actually saved my own settings, so I'm going to go ahead and load them. Um, we have a clear pad now, so we're going to load. And I'm going to go grab my settings real quick. And it's good practice to, to save your defaults. So here's what I have. I have the city, the location, and everything. And even though this is checked in blank, if there's nothing in there, it's not going to put anything there. But when I apply the stationary pad to a set of images, I'm only going to apply what's checked. And that's important, and we'll talk about that in a minute. But it's a good idea and good practice to have all this information loaded properly and accurately, because if you upload to Flickr or if you send via email, all this information is sent with it, as well as the exit data for the camera. This information is going to go along with it, and it's really important so that when somebody gets your photo and they look at it, they actually know who it belongs to. I go one more step, and I use these three categories over here for some more of my XF data. That way I have a quick access to it. And in some cases, I'll even put the shooting data up here in the caption. So let's, let's talk about that for a second. Um, it's a good idea to have a caption for all of your images. And the reason is, is this caption or description is used by Flickr, SmugMug, and a variety of different other places. Also, I like to add in a headline, which is going to be a title of the image. And when we get to the exporting part of this, you'll see how this works. And it's really important that you add keywords. Now, there is one thing to remember. If you use these plus signs right here on these three fields, not only is it going to add the keywords that you type here, but it's going to, it's going to actually add them in addition to what's already there. So if you already have some keywords and you want to completely overwrite them, leave this unchecked. If you want to just add some new keywords to it, leave this checked. And I'll show you how that works here in just a minute. So it's real important to have all this filled out. Once you get it filled out to a default state, then you can hit save and save the file on your computer somewhere, and you can always refer back to it. There's a couple of them that I have here. Here's a Smug Mug Cart. Here's the PAW project that we're working on. So it's a good idea to have um, these set aside and, and you can use them and call them at any time. Now we did look at this right here. These are called variables. Variables are used in a variety of different places throughout Photo Mechanic and are extremely powerful. So if I want to add the XF data to my description of my photo, I can do that with variables. And let me load up another one of my stationary pads so you can see how that's done. So as you can see here, this is a category is now the PAW project. And then up here, I automatically add the shooting data to the description. So when this gets uploaded to SmugMug and somebody wants to look at it, or even Flickr, that information is available. That information can also be available in your when you send out via an email. It can show up in the body of the email. And how do variables work? Well, that, that they're actually pretty simple. Let's say that I want to add in to the keywords the model of the camera body that I used to shoot this. Well, I can type in bracket model bracket and it'll show up here. But if I go to variables and I look for that variable in this list, there's my camera information at the top. And let's go down and find model. So I double click it and it's going to add the model there and I can add something like lens as well. So let's add in the lens type. 
this is going to add these keywords automatically to every photo. And we'll try that. So let's go up here and let's find the lens type. There it is. We'll double click that. So I'm going to close my global stationary pad. I'm going to select a photo and let's apply it. So we'll apply IPTC stationary pad to the photo. Click. It's done. Now when I look at this photo's information, there's all my shooting data. There's my body. There's my lens. Here's all of my EXIF data that I shot. Here's my city, state, zip, who I am, how to get a hold of me, my copyright information. It's all here. So that's the global stationary pad. Now let's say that I want to add a little bit more. I can continue to type. And hit OK. So now all my information is there. It's tagged and I can use that information to search on later. Now if I want to apply the stationary pad to every image here, I can also do that. But in this case, I don't want to overwrite absolutely everything. I want to keep, for instance, I might want to keep the caption and the keywords that already exist, but I just want to add to them. So let's see how we do that. I'm going to select all. I'm going to go to image, stationary pad. This time I'm going to open it before I apply it. I'm going to check these boxes for the headlines and the keywords and the caption. So that way when I apply it, it's going to add this information instead of overwrite it. Now since I already have images selected, I can hit apply right here. And it's going to apply that right to the selected images. It's already done. So now when I click on I for information, I'm going to see what we have. If you notice on this keywords, it added Nikon and the camera lens to it. If I come back over here to the one that had the description, there's the description. There's my shooting data. And everything is added here. Now, another option that you can do is you can scroll. Oh, see, I made a change, and it's telling me that I made a change, so I'm going to hit yes to save it. I can copy this information if I want. If I hit copy, and I can go to the next image and paste it. So if I'm doing multiple images, I can paste the X update, or I'm sorry, I can paste the IPTC data that's here into the next photo and replicate it from photo to photo. Another thing that I can do while I'm in here is I can click on this thumbnail and get a larger view of it so that I can see exactly what it is that I'm working on.